What have you found over the years is like um, most important? What, what single thing would you like to tell patients with TMD, for example? Well, I think, I think the, the most important things for patients right now is there's actually hope. Yeah. And we, we didn't have that for a long time uh, because for various reasons, patients couldn't get access, couldn't get um, good diagnosis. They couldn't get diagnostically based treatment. And it's been a very slow journey. Uh, for example, in 1988, I did my first magnetic resonance scan. And it's kind of been a frustrating experience through the years to see that people don't incorporate that, but things are changing. And I think, I think dentists and interested parties, other physicians are are now looking at the joint like they haven't in the past. And that's where patients get hope because otherwise this was very much an empirical field. And, you know, based on symptoms, based upon gut feeling of the doctor treating them or whatever. So as you know, what you came and learned from me uh, was basically a classification of joint structures. Right. And I've always contended that that is, that is really the baseline uh, for unification of different concepts in dentistry. So if you, have, if you have a definable spectrum of damage, it gives us a starting point to begin to sift through different kinds of treatment options that I think in the end will make patients' outcomes more successful. I'm a general dentist and probably about six or seven years ago I became very interested in the, in the TMD world. And basically, I found that when I started measuring with uh, reproducible metrics and objective metrics, like sensors instead of the bite paper that the normal dentist uses, that I was affecting changes that I couldn't do otherwise. Well, I think that's true. And I think that, that what you have discovered by taking the course and integrating concepts is that as you see a new patient case or a new patient dilemma, you can build on the baseline of what you already know. So each image builds on, on the database for the next patient. And eventually you get to a point where things that seemed unusual or esoteric right. become more predictable to us. That's part of the predictability of having imaging and classification. Yeah. And that's where patients get more hope. You know, if, if a doctor can say to a patient, I've already seen you, and or I've already seen you a dozen times or a hundred times or whatever, I think that helps to assure patients that there is a track record and they don't feel necessarily so all alone when right. they when they realize that, you know, they're not unique, there are other people with similar types of pain patterning. There are other people who have failed other treatments. There are other people who uh, were turned off by lack of commitment by their doctors or, or lack of answers because imaging wasn't being done. And, you know, so I think that's an important message for the patients as well. You know, they don't have to feel isolated. They don't have to feel alone because they'll be defined in a certain way based upon what's wrong with them. And with a database of hundreds or thousands of patients going before them, right. you know, there's a reference point to go back to to help make their treatment and outcome more predictable. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it opens your mind when you can quantify something. I mean, the T-scan sensor that I'm using on the front, basically that's the core tool for measuring what's going on in the front of the bite. And then the MRI and the CT, you combine those three technologies and then add some muscle in the mix. I mean, it changes things. It's a game changer. I would encourage any dentist, anyone that's looking for continuing education to consider seeing Dr. Piper at the PERC or perhaps seeing us at what we're calling the Center for Neural Occlusion.